<laughs> Hello, little buddy. He's already had his breakfast, and he's back out here. Yeah, he's already had his breakfast, and he's back out here. I came out here to give you a garden update before the storm hits. I, I don't know. I might should wait till um after the storm hits. About another hour, we're supposed to have a storm move through that uh, possibly high winds, heavy rain, hail, maybe even tornadoes. I don't know. But anyway, I thought I'd give you a quick garden update because I missed it yesterday. <coughs> 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 I moved my planter on this side because I think it would get a little bit more sun on this side of the door than over on the other side where it was. And it looks better. And look at my greens. I harvested them. I mean, I scalped them the other day, remember? I, I scalped them down to a nub. And look at them now. Pretty and healthy. Look at all the marigold seeds that are coming up with my rose bush. <laughs> that was just a rose cutting I stuck down there in this pot where the peppermint was. And look at it. It didn't even have leaves on it when I put it there. And it's got a bud on it. My other roses. I put a few more seeds down in here. Uh, sunflowers. Uh four o'clocks dahlias and i decided to move my um hollyhock book uh planter up here and get it off of the walk i had too much clutter in the walk <clears throat> i mean it may not stay there but it's there for right now i started uh getting up all these weeds out of my walkway too. I got to come out here one day and get all this up. Because look at it. <laughs> the weeds and flower, wildflowers are coming up through the cracks. And they're about to take over my walk. But it looks like my cucumber is going to make it over there. Right there. Hopefully. And it'll go up that tree. And produce me some cucumbers. I see marigolds coming up. Right there. You can barely see them. Right there. <clears throat> but they're coming up all throughout these uh, other plants. Can't remember what that is. But it's planted from a flower bulb. And I got them throughout the rock garden over there. Look at little buddy. <laughs> he come out here next to the street. See, my crepe myrtles are looking real good. And I'm going to have to give in, I guess, and come out here and mow. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to because all these are flowers. They're just not open fully right now because it's so cloudy and rainy. But they'll open up. And I noticed I have got blue bonnets coming up everywhere. There's one right there in the middle of the screen. There's one over there. There's one over there in the middle of the screen. Over here. <laughs> and I got four right here those are blue bonnets y'all and you see why i don't want to cut my yard um, and i've got i've got it full of flowers <laughs> i definitely don't want to cut my blue bonnets down it took me too long to get them to grow there's two more blue bonnets i'll try not to move this too fast but there's another blue bonnet I got blue bonnets all here. Over there next to the pot. And they'll spread because for every flower 
<clears throat> they're going to drop more seeds. My mom's fixing the bloom, and I got uh, sunflowers coming up all around it, and a marigold in there. Let's get this back down to normal so it don't make you dizzy. And see my uh, rose cuttings that I put in the pots? And my sunflowers, my blanket flowers, and I put some more seed down in there. Should be coming up. But there's one of the rose bushes there. That's looking real good. It's in the ground. But see, I can't dig every spot here where I want to put a flower. I can't dig a hole right there where that pot is. I can't dig a hole where this pot is because of the rocks. This one, I don't know. It's, it's still green. So it's got a chance. <laughs> I thinned out my moonflowers right there because they were so crowded up. But I've got uh, kale, I've got cilantro over there, and Swiss chard there, or perpetual spinach. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about me coughing. My allergies are terrible. But this rose bush is looking pretty good. It's not put out a bud yet, but it's put out leaves, and i got my sunflowers, and blanket flowers and other stuff planted around it they kind of sprung back to life we got this little rose bush here that's got leaves coming out on it so maybe it'll live this cutting i don't know it's kind of doubtful i may have to put another cutting in there it's still green but i just don't know about it <laughs> This one's looking good. That one looks real good. And something broke this one off. It looks like somebody stepped on it, and I don't know why. <laughs> but I'm leaving it there because the roots are there. The roots are still alive, so it may still grow. <coughs> And this is my rutabaga. I didn't, I didn't put a, a rose bush in that yet. I probably should put a cutting down in there, though, and let it be rooting while my rutabagas come up. Or while the rutabagas, you know, mature. And that one I don't know either. There's no, rose, uh, no leaves coming out on it. It's still partially green. So, there still may be hope for it. <clears throat> yeah, we got a little bit of rain last night. Not much, but... They're expecting a possibility of a severe storm about 11 o'clock. Which is about 8.39, 9 o'clock now, I think. But I transplanted those uh, moonflowers that were in the pot in the wishing well over here on this back side of the um, rock garden because you know they're living on the front side where the sun shines mostly in the morning but on the back side they just didn't come back up for some reason so I took those that were in the wishing well and I filled it in back here hopefully we'll get another more rain today it'll soak the ground good and it'll help my moonflowers live but I've got blanket flowers everywhere <laughs> But see, they're all getting ready to bloom. They got pods on them, see? In the center of that. 
That one's got two pods on it over there. These have got some big ones. That one's almost ready to open. That'll be open either tonight or tomorrow. That middle one there. And this one's got some on it. Got one way under there. And it's funny because I put my mashed potato melon and some other melons or zucchinis in those pots back there. <laughs> so I don't know. They're liable to go crazy when they start growing and grow everywhere. But so far, the marigold seeds that I planted in here, most of them are coming up. Hopefully, we'll survive amongst all the blanket flowers, the moon flowers, and every other kind of flower that I've got out here. <laughs> but I am so happy with my moon flowers. Look at that plant. Look how big it is. And that has just been watered by nature. I have not had to bring my water hose out here not one time this year. Because it seems like every time it comes to my watering day, it rains. Which I'm tickled to death over. So I don't have to get out here and water because it rains. <laughs> My bok choy. I mean, the bok choy is looking real good. These were kind of stunted because the bugs got on them, started eating the plants, but I put some dust on them, and I guess I killed the bugs because they're starting to grow now. But those are real pretty. my squash look at that pretty flower look at there i got two yellow squash down in there started so it looks like i'm gonna have two and i got some started here too right there if the bees pollinate, do their job. My rose bushes, look at that. They're all putting out growth, so maybe they've rooted. Maybe they will survive. <laughs> One's on this side. And, you know, that one was from last summer. And then that one. <clears throat> These rose bushes. And I didn't replace the rose bush that was there. I've just put blanket flowers and other stuff in there. But I need to pull most of this stuff out of here. It wasn't intended for this ground cover and everything else to be in here. But, you know, it, it grows where it wants to grow, don't it? My irises. one back there getting ready to open or it's opening it'll be probably open tomorrow but mine are like a <clears throat> a burnt orange and yellow purple all kind of colors and there's my little rose bush there that survived from last year Yeah, my irises, my bearded irises is full of blooms. See all those blooms? They just have not opened yet. They're getting ready to, though. <clears throat> so, it'll be pretty here in a little bit. <laughs> and I still got to thin them out. Like, well, really not thin them out, but get some off of the rose bush on this side. And get some off of the rose bush on that side. And maybe move them over there. 
where that rose bush didn't live because I don't want them to crowd my rose bushes out. So when the flowers die off this year, I'll probably pull up a few on each side, move them back away from the uh, rose bushes. But look at all the blanket flowers out here. <laughs> My yard is nothing but blanket flowers and purple flowers and pink and yellow. And I mean, I can't even walk out here without stepping on flowers. Look at all of them. They're all around my squash plants. Look at all those around the squash plant. That's all flowers. <laughs> One of my friends said, well, if I had the flower, those blanket flowers coming up in my yard where I dropped seed years ago, and they're pretty, I would just put rocks around them and put wherever they're growing into a rock garden. I said, well, I'd have to do my whole yard like that because they're all over the yard. <laughs> They're not just in one spot. And there's my uh, Charleston gray watermelon. I don't know if it's getting enough sun on this side. And there is my, I think that's a Charleston gray as well. And see, it looks, uh, they look greener here because I think they get more morning sun. And I've got a Charleston Gray, I think, and a Black Diamond. This one is the Charleston Gray. That one is the Black Diamond. They were the only two I had left, so I put them in the same pot. <laughs> and this is a Black Diamond watermelon that I put three seeds in there, so all three of them came up. I mean, look at all the blanket flowers. That's all this is, is blanket flowers out through here. I can't walk anywhere without stepping on them. My potatoes, <laughs> still growing like crazy. And those uh, volunteer plants, I'll find out what they are, I guess, when they produce something. You know, they came up in the banana tree pot and look at this look how big this has gotten again and i harvested that not long ago when i did all the rest of them and see i got another one coming up in here <laughs> it's one of the squashes or the winter squash or something and I need to get that one out, I guess, too. But my little banana tree, see that new leaf? And there's a new leaf right there coming on that. So they are starting to grow after I took it out of the potato pot. <laughs> one thing I should have is potatoes. And I don't remember what I put in here. Sweet dumpling. Yeah, sweet, sweet dumpling squash is what that is. My potatoes. Got a squash there. And I replanted my uh, parsnips here. I did put in a couple of tomato plants so they'll grow up on this trellis, this canopy. I've got a sunflower in here. But I did plant three more rows of parsnips. But I use the aloe vera method. So hopefully this time they will come up. Volunteer sunflowers right there, y'all. <laughs> my parsnips in the little pots. My greens in the top three. I got some kind of melon down there voluntarily come up. With a pepper plant that's in there. I've got a pepper plant in, in the middle. And I should have some pepper seed coming up here pretty soon. Because all three bottom pots were planted with hot peppers. And then we had this uh, 
volunteer plant come up. My okra again, it's looking better. <laughs> and my walking onions are walking, y'all. Look at this. Look at that. They're walking. They're going to have uh, babies up there to where I can replant them pretty soon. They're all walking. Pregnant onions. <laughs> and my greens here that I harvested. And look at the leaves back on them again. I've got Chinese cabbages. I've got perpetual spinach, which is Swiss chard. And my daughter-in-law asked me, she said, well, don't you let the cabbage head up? Well, this, this Chinese cabbage does not head up. It puts out big leaves that you harvest and cook. But it does not head up like the normal cabbage that we know. And I don't know if these parsnips are going to make it or not. Some of them are. I need to put, a, well, I already put a drip pan under there. I don't think this one will stay in moist enough. But I'll get more uh, little pans to put under them. And I put my mandevilla here, the yellow one. And look at that. It's got buds on it already. I want it to climb up here with my clematis. I think that'll be really pretty. My yellow beets, I got onion, I mean, tomato plants, there are four of them, and I'm going to have to pull some of those out when they get a little bigger. Can't leave all of them there. My Chinese cabbages. Yeah, look at all the leaves that have come back on there already, and I just, man, I scalped these plants the other day. My hillbilly tomato. That's looking real good. I got a beefsteak tomato right there. Y'all, that came up from seed, remember? <laughs> I have not bought one plant for my garden. Everything has come up from seed. And there is uh, the red slicing tomato. You know that I planted just a slice of tomato in there. And I've thinned it down to three plants. I'm going to let those get a little bit bigger. And then I might thin them down to one. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, how nice. I mean, how beautiful is that? I scalped those stalks the other day. And put four packages of greens in the freezer. And they've come back this nice. Again. And I've got perpetual spinach growing in there. Don't ask me why, but I stuck the pot in there. <laughs> Here. And look at the tomato plant. There's three of them in there. That's too many. I don't need but one. And I think this is a hillbilly. No, that's a beefsteak. But they come up from seed. That's a hillbilly there. More beets. I got a squash in that little bucket. A little buddy under the chair. <laughs> My cucumbers are looking good. I put a bamboo pole here hoping they'll climb up the bamboo pole. My yellow squash, my basil, yellow squash. I got sunflowers, blanket flowers, clematis, you name it in this pot. I want it to fill up this trellis this year like it did one year before. But see, I got a basil, <laughs> several of them. That got one big one, a couple of them there. And a sunflower. 
and my squash <laughs> and my rose bushes. Peppermint. Chives. And see, they do kind of like the walking onions. They put out baby bulbs at the top that you can plant and have another pot of uh, chives. Got some right there, too. And I had a tomato in there last year. And then all of a sudden the chives started growing like crazy and took over. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to put a tomato back in there this year or not. And look at this, this rose bush. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? Oh, I'm in love with my roses. That is awesome. That is the height of awesomeness right there. Mm. Love it, love it, love it. Beautiful. I need to move my pot, though, because it's getting too close to my rose bush. <laughs> my rose bush is taking over. Need to move it on around, I guess. And I got a canary yellow, yellow melon right there growing with a pot, uh, rutabaga. I got a rutabaga here in the pot. And I'm going to replant another hillbilly tomato or something back there. I'll get another tomato. And there are my beans. I had to close my door. My little plastic door on my greenhouse because the winds were getting up yesterday. And, and if they get up today, I don't want it blowing everything around inside. Hopefully that'll keep hail from going in if it's small enough. My pea garden, y'all. These are foot-long beans. Several different kind of uh, beans. Peas, beans, whatever you want to call them. And hopefully they're going to go up my trellises. <laughs> Because those foot-long beans, some of them get almost two foot long. So they need a place for the vines to grow. So there it is. Look at there. I put this bamboo pole here for the bean to grow on. And look where it's growing. It went over there and latched on to the... <laughs> It latched onto that thing. <laughs> so it don't matter what you do. Plants are going to... It's like they got a mind of their own. They're going to do... They're going to go where they want to go. We'll see how many climb up my wooden... My bamboo or my wooden stakes. Because they're supposed to latch on to bamboo or wooden stakes a lot quicker than metal ones. But you see right there... I've tried to get it to wrap around this. And other than tying it on there, it went right over there and wrapped around that metal metal trellis. So I'm going to leave it. That's where it wants to go. Weirdness of a garden. And I've got all kind of peas and beans in here. I think I even had snow peas in there that come up from last year. And I got some of the peas that vine too that'll grow up. Up the side of the vine. I mean up the side of the trellis. I haven't put anything back here yet this year. Don't know if I will or not. I've given that pot to sunflowers, that one's to sunflowers, and that one, <laughs> and that one to peppermint. I mean, the sunflowers all came up voluntarily from last year having sunflowers planted here. It dropped seeds, and I got all these volunteer sunflowers coming up or growing.
So I'm leaving them. Yep, that's my sunflower garden. <laughs> this is my romaine lettuce garden. Because <laughs> every pot through right in this section is all romaine lettuce. I want to put a tomato there because I haven't planted anything yet. And I don't know what I'll put in the small pot yet. Might put a basil or something or a marigold. And see my walking onions, how they're doing? This one's almost ready to pop open. Gold medallion or gold medal tomatoes right there. Gold metal tomatoes. They came up from seed, y'all. And these are... What did I plant here? Sweet dumpling squash. Canary yellow melon. I don't know if that's a watermelon or what, but we'll see. And I got eggplant. Remember we planted all that from uh, seed with the aloe vera underneath? And this is all eggplant, purple eggplant. All of it's coming up where I planted it from seed with aloe vera. And of course this is my asparagus from last year that I've already harvested. <laughs> this is my red tomato that come up from a slice. So far, I've got four little seedlings come up. Hot pepper, I got one pepper come up from that little pot. I don't have any of the jalapenos come up yet. And there's another tomato plant that came up from seed. The bell pepper has not come up yet. And there's this uh, seed from, I don't know if that was a slice of tomato or just some tomato seed I put in with aloe vera. And a hot pepper there that hasn't come up yet. And look at there. I've got three or four plants already coming up here. That was just from that slice of tomato. And I got one there. I think I thinned those, that one out already. I didn't thin this one. But that was from a slice of tomato, y'all. I've got five or six little tomato plants coming up right there. They're going to have to be thinned out. And I got one there next to it. So the aloe vera trick works. Peppers do take longer to germinate than the tomatoes. And look at all this. I am going to have so many little walking onions to plant. Look at that. <laughs> I'm not going to have a shortage on onions for this year. And there's my potatoes again coming up in my compost bin. I'm anxious to see if that's going to produce potatoes. Because when it's time, I'm going to pull that out and I'll dig down in that compost and see what's in there. <laughs> we will see. And look at all my cucumbers, y'all. Every bucket has at least three or four cucumber plants start started. And they're all from seed. Well, that one's got one. I need to pull one out from one of these pots that's got three or four in it and put it over here. And there's my uh, tree collard. You know, I told you I had one surviving tree collard. Well, there it is. I left it in that bucket. And I've got <clears throat> purple tree collard. No, it's purple walking collards walking stick collard or something like that but it's purple i need to get that seed out and see if it will come up 
My blanket flowers in my cinder blocks are going to make it, looks like. The ones that don't, I'll plant something else in it. I got stuff falling out of the trees on me. Potatoes. <laughs> my raspberry bush. <laughs> Look at this. It's growing crazy. I need it over close to one of these trellises, these arbors, and let the raspberry bush go up the arbor, I think. I may do that. I may move it over there just to give it something to climb on. I mean, I don't know how long these branches will get, but they need something to grow up on or something to support them. So I may just move it over there. I don't know. I'll rearrange some of these pots and move my raspberry bush over to the arbor. But you know, I got tomatoes over there that I want to grow up the arbors too. And look at that clematis. It's all the way covering the top. Onions. See, I've got some of these pots are still not planted yet. I could probably put my tree collard in one of these. My chives. <laughs> there, they're, the chives are getting just like the ones on the other side. They're going to put out the baby chives. A yellow squash. I've got all of these planted except that one bucket and this one dish pan. And they're with Hungarian hot wax peppers. I've only got one over there, but I've got three here. That's kind of weird. I'm hoping to get jalapenos or something in the bucket in this, tray, this dish pan. And I don't know yet what I'm planting in all these. I've got a black diamond watermelon. Of all places to put a watermelon, I got it right here in the middle of my garden. It's liable to grow crazy and go everywhere. I'm just curious to see what will happen with it planted there. But see, this needs something to grow on. Look at this. Yeah, I'm thinking it would probably do real good to put it here where these small pots are maybe hmm I don't know because it's growing like crazy <laughs> it definitely needs to be out of this spot it needs to be out in the yard somewhere where it's got room and I don't know where to put it. Hmm. I just don't know where to put it. I got red tomatoes there slicing. That was just from a slice of tomato, y'all. Look at all those little plants coming up. I mean, some of them may not come up, but usually they will. I've got walking onions, rutabagas, green lettuce. See, all my blanket flowers are living through here. <laughs> and I got some of that creeping flower stuff. I don't know what they call it. But it's got little lavender color flowers on it. It's like a ground cover. Oh, I got a tomato coming up there. And that was from the slice. Just a slice of tomato, y'all. Oh, got one there. Two of them. And I got one over here. Got another one there. And that was from that slice of tomato. And these are two hillbilly tomato plants right there. Those little seedlings. Rutabaga in the pot. Oh, 
<sighs> rutabaga down there. Rutabaga, and I think those are hillbilly tomatoes or... No, I think those were the two volunteers that came up, and I'm not sure what type of tomato that is. But we'll find out when it starts producing uh, tomatoes, huh? Marconi sweet peppers. I got one, two, three, four in that yellow pot, five down here, six, seven, eight, at least eight Marconi peppers. This is mixed geranium. I don't know if it's going to do anything. And tomatoes from that slice of tomato I put out there. <laughs> See, I'm going to have to start transplanting some little tomato plants. Because I can't leave six or seven in one little hump like that. Green lettuce coming up. Swiss chard. Purple. Purple kale, whatever they call it. I've got lettuce in the bottom. I've got Swiss chard up here. Lettuce. And the tomatoes from the slice of tomato that we put there. And I've got four plants coming up already. And there's some from the slice of tomato. There's four or five plants already. So see, I'm leaving some of my pots empty because I've got to transplant some. <laughs> I'm going to have to pull some of these tomato plants out and put them over there in some of the empty spots. And then I've got my clematis. That has not bloomed yet. But I think I've got that figured out. I've got <laughs> volunteers from last year. I've got this flower that's come up, and I can't think of the name of it. It came up from last year because I didn't plant it. I got Swiss chard in that little pot. And these are still looking halfway decent. I got marigolds coming up in here. Right along with everything else. But it don't look like my hollyhocks is coming back up. They probably need to be in the ground. Not in the pot. And my clematis there. I came out here yesterday and put um, forget-me-not seeds out, dahlia seeds out, amongst all this other stuff growing here. My daylilies, my, um, oh, daffodils. Evidently, they may not get enough sun over here, and that may be why they're not blooming. Because usually they pretty well have blooms on them by now. And since most of my daylilies are gone up here, I've only got one, like one little hill of them. I planted blanket flowers, forget-me-not, marigolds. Can't remember if I put dahlia seeds up here or not, but at least there's something that's going to be growing and blooming. <laughs> there's going to be a flower up there. And I don't know about this one. It's still green. It still may survive. I don't know. We'll give it a chance. These mums are getting ready to bloom. Got buds on them. My problem is, <clears throat> I think they don't get enough water to do really well out here. Because I don't have irrigation or anything run to it. 
And I was going to come out and water yesterday. But they kept saying we were going to get rain last night and we were going to get storms today. So I said, well, there's no need in me watering if it's going to rain. But I got daylilies, my flower bulbs that I cannot remember the names of coming up. I've got dahlias coming up over there, marigolds. I think I put uh, a hill of four o'clocks there from seed. They'll hopefully they'll come up. I put four o'clocks at this corner, and I put four o'clocks at that corner over there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. A lot of my flower bulbs, though, they must have just died last year from no water at all. They just dehydrated. <laughs> from the heat and everything else. But I do have daylilies back there. And I had a whole row of them across here, but a lot of them are not coming up. And I got this ivy, this wild ivy, and it's not poisonous. This is the kind that's not poisonous. But it grows like crazy out here. And I can't get rid of it. <laughs> it just naturally grows here. So now I'm just having to be content with ivy growing. One of my blanket flowers is blooming. That one's getting ready to bloom. That one's got a bud on it. But look here at the corner of my carport. <laughs> I've got blue bonnets. And I put blue bonnet seed out in the rock garden. And every year since I put the seed in the rock garden, come up everywhere except the rock garden. They've come out here between the rock garden and the carport or they come up here in the corner but they don't come up where I planted them <laughs> so go figure <laughs> and all of these are blanket flowers y'all <laughs> So thick with blanket flowers. And it'll be pretty when it blooms. But they just don't want to come up where you want them to. They come up at where they want to come up. Blanket flowers all around the great myrtle. All around my mailbox. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen marigolds coming up from seed here. But I guess it takes the um, eggplant and the, what was it, peppers or something I planted out here from seed just to see if it would come up. So hopefully with this rain we've been getting, it'll encourage them to come up. Got to clean my bird bath out, put water in it. I would think as much as it rained, it would have water in it, but there's very little in there. Yeah, I got to get out here and clean these weeds up from my walk. <laughs> Looks terrible. And put out salt or something to keep them from growing. And I really need to do that when the ground is wet. Because it's easier to pull them out when the ground's wet. When it gets dry and hard, it's impossible. It is totally impossible to get them pulled up. See my seashells I had from North Carolina? Picked them up on the beach when I lived there. Brought some of them with me out here.
Yeah, I'll have to thin those marigolds out. But I do need to trim that rose bush. <laughs> it looks weird, that one stalk so tall and nothing down below it. Yeah, and I planted nasturtium seed up here in the top of this. I've got forget-me-not seeds here. I've got, um, what do I have? R Red Russian kale here. You know, I thinned it out and transplanted some, and that was what was left. And I've got uh, Chinese cabbage here, but... It's not looking too good. And I got my romaine lettuce at the bottom. So we'll see if any of it doesn't survive and grow and put out a plant. Well, then I'll just replace it with some flowers. I'll put flower seed or transplants or something in it. My aloe is starting to grow. Look at those baby shoots coming up from in there. But it's all curled up. I wish it would straighten. <laughs> this is crazy. This is the craziest aloe vera I've ever had. I've never had one to curl up like that before. But it was trying to all go through toward the sun. I don't know what that is. Under the bottom of the aloe vera. And I got all these here that are starting to grow. Most of them are. I try not to keep them too wet because aloe vera doesn't like a ton of water. It will rot if you put too much water to it. So I keep it under the patio enough to where some of the blowing rain will hit it. Or the mist will hit it, but it doesn't get the downpour like these other pots get. And I got a tomato plant in here. Look at that. <laughs> it's trying to come up through there, but that squash or zucchini is trying to take over. Keep these leaves pushed over and give that tomato plant a chance. I probably ought to pull it out and move it somewhere else is what I need to do. Because it's fighting for the sun. <laughs> and that was the volunteer from last year. I think that was one of those little grape or cherry tomatoes. It has the little tomatoes on it. I still haven't got my birdhouse put back up on my post. I need to get it put back up there, right up there on the top of that big one. One day, tomato plant in there with my greens and my sunflowers. Perpetual spinach or Swiss chard as they call it. I love that. I love to just cook up a pot full of it. I'd rather have that in regular spinach. My peppermints come back. I tried to keep all the moonflowers pulled out. But look, there's two plants right here of moonflowers. Another one. Look at that. They put down deep roots. I don't want the moonflowers taking over my peppermint. And they will take over. That's the reason I advised anybody, if you plant moonflowers, plant them where you don't mind them spreading a little bit. Because everywhere they drop, seeds like mine out there will, will grow. <laughs> They'll produce more and more plants every year. 
And I don't mind if they spread around that rock garden. If they come out of the rock garden, I'll mow them. Mow them down. Or maybe make the garden bigger. I don't know. <laughs> there's no telling. But there's so many rocks and boulders on the ground. There's not many places that anything will grow. Except right in that one spot where I've just filled in with tons and tons of mulch and garden soil and manure and everything else to build it up to plant in. So that's the only way you can go here, basically. Unless it's a wildflower like those. is just put in a raised garden or pots and totes and buckets. <laughs> Like my garden back there. You see, I moved me a chair back there. Maybe I can have some place to sit down and rest when I'm working back there. Be a nice place to hang out when all my stuff starts producing. <laughs> Take me a cup of coffee out there and just sit in the garden. Or maybe do a live from back there sometimes. Yeah, do a live from the garden. That'd be kind of neat. Just do a live from the garden. I was going to put a rose bush on this side, but I figured, well, it'll get too big. It'll overpower my, my AC unit here. And it needs to get plenty of air, so I don't want to plant stuff right up close to it. Like those irises are leaning over this way. <laughs> That's the reason I said I've got to move part of them because they're taking over my rose bush. And they're taking over my rose bush on that side. So I got to pull some out and move them. And they love this spot. I had them on the other side of the yard and they didn't do much. So. That's why I'm going to put some down there between the two rose bushes there. And I'll just keep them away from my rose bushes. I don't want them to overcrowd my rose bushes. And I thought, too, it would be pretty if I ever get around to doing it. When I try to um, finish this. You know, move the pots out, concrete the rocks together, and make a proper, like, rock garden out here. Fix spots to where it will hold the pots better than what they're doing now. And um, maybe eventually move some irises out here around the bird bath. I think that would be pretty. But, you know, hey... <laughs> All in due time, I can only do so much, so. I've got too many things on my list to do already. Especially with the floor and clean house, clean, redo the floor, uh, mow the lawn, <laughs> work the garden, plant the garden. <laughs> so, my plate's full, y'all. <laughs> So with that, I think I've covered pretty much everything in the garden. Let's hope the storm doesn't come through and tear up everything. So we'll see. Y'all have a blessed day. See y'all my next one. Bye.